Cool. So thanks everyone for coming. Um, this session is going to be covering my top tips for marketing for your food enterprise. So I'm covering a few different things today. I'm going to be covering email marketing, social media marketing, and content creation, and just some tips on how to best use your time from your marketing as well. Um, so I'm going to be going over quite a few things in quite light detail. So it's a good reminder for anyone who's done my sessions before of the different things to think about. Um, but if at any point you need a bit more detail on any of the things that I cover, again, just ask your questions, that's totally fine. Um, and I've also got some slides which I'll share after the session to everyone that joined. Uh, and th that's packed full of other resources for you, so links to other webinars that go into any of the topics in more detail. Um, so there's lots of information there to really help you get your, get your marketing right for your food enterprise. So, so um, the first thing actually that I want to talk about is maybe a little bit specific for Open Food Network enterprises. So I'm assuming that most of you have a shop front, but if you don't already, um, the first kind of five, 10 minutes will be talking about tips to get the most out of your Open Food Network shop front. Um, so it'll be useful for if you do set up a, a shop front. So. Okay, so also for the slides after the session, this page is actually a link that will take you to a specific webinar that goes in very kind of clear step-by-step -step detail how to make it, take any of these actions on your shop front that I'm gonna talk about. So when you're looking, so when you're thinking about how to market your food enterprise, one of the most important things is to really get the place where your customers make a shopping action right. And in your case, that's your open food network shop front. So there's a couple of changes or improvements that you can make that will make your shop front work a lot harder for you. And the first thing is to just make sure that you link to your shop page. And I mean, link to your shop page everywhere that you might be interacting with your customers. So if you're sending emails to your customers or order cycle reminder emails, make sure to in include a link there that takes people directly to your shop page on your shop front. If on social media, we have, um, for example, on Facebook, you've got the kind of the blue button that you can have there. Make sure that that is a shop now button so that basically the most valuable action that your customers can take is always the easiest action for them to take. And on Instagram, always have a link to your shop front in your bio on Instagram as well. So it's just making sure that the journey that your customer takes to the shop front where they can actually shop with you is the clearest, easiest, quickest journey that they can take in any of the places that they interact with you online. Um, and also on your shop front, if you can include tips to make it easier for your customers to shop with you. And what I mean by that is, for example, where you have categories and your shoppers can shop by categories, it might not be something that your shoppers know that they can do. So on your shop front, you could put this in your notices page, just include some tips on different things that your customers can do to improve their shopping experience with you. And also a really good thing to do on your shop front is include a three or four step guide of how to shop with you. So it's making, you might assume that your customer knows, okay, they go to your shop shopping um, tab, fill their basket and then check out. But actually it's really nice to kind of make that clear step-by-step -step for your customer. There's lots of research that shows that step-by-steps have a really positive effect of encouraging the, the reader to take those actions that you're explaining. So this could be something simple as, you know, step one, go to the shop tab, include a link to your shop tab. Step two, fill your basket. Step three, check out. Step four, come and collect your lovely produce. In that kind of step-by-step, -step, you can also include there um, anything that you can to take away any guessing that your customer might, might have to take around, you know, what they might experience when shopping with you. So if a customer's coming to collect, that would be a really good place in the step four, come to collect your delicious produce. That would be a really good place to perhaps include um, an element of your COVID policy. What can they expect when they get there? Can they expect a contactless pickup? Um, so yeah, I can, there's, I'm going to share something after this as well with a few more details um, uh, around COVID. Um, I think actually, Louis, if you were part of the, the Thriving Food Hubs Facebook group, Louis shared a really good post this week and it was breaking down the four C's of COVID. So this kind of three or four step guide of how to shop with you is quite a nice place to weave in some of your COVID policies to help your customers feel comfortable and safe shopping with you. And this leads me on to my final tip here around making it easy to shop with you. 
is generate trust with your customers. And a really easy way to do that in this time is to really talk about what steps you're taking with regards to COVID to keep your customers safe. So the four C's of COVID are cleanliness, contactless, compassion, and community. So if you can incorporate talking about what you're doing as an enterprise around those four points into, and into this space, then that's a really good thing to do. And that could be put on your notices page on your shop front, or it could be put on your about page on your shop front. And you could also incorporate some of this in your um, order cycle open page as well. So. And the other thing to do on your shop front, this is my other marketing tip, is to make sure you're managing your customer expectations. So one of the easiest ways to do this is that Again, this is very Open Food Network shop front specific, um, but when your order cycle is closed, many people have an order cycle close page. So your customers coming to your shop front who arrive at your order cycle close page, might, if it's a new customer, they might be confused. What is an order cycle? Um, they might not know what it is. So make sure on your order cycle close page, um, explain what an order cycle is. You can explain how it works. And you can also explain what the benefits are to your customer. So if you're using an order cycle system, make sure you use that space to explain to your customer, we use this system because it helps us make sure that our produce is super fresh for you every week. Um, and also use this space to uh, include a call to action as well. Because you know a new customer or an existing customer has come to your order cycle close page, they might be disappointed because they actually want to shop with you and they, you know, they might've just missed uh, your shop for the week. So on that page, it's a really good space to include a link to your newsletter because the benefit is easily sold there. Join our newsletter and every week you'll get an order cycle reminder email so you'll never miss an order cycle again. So it's a, yeah, to make that space really work for you because this is really prime space of where you're gonna be reaching your customers. Um, and my third main set of tips for your order cycle, um, for your Open Food Network shop front, is to use the space to continue to develop your relationship with your customers. So that means that on your shop front, sorry, managing the waiting room as I'm talking here. On your shop front, uh, make sure that on your about page, on your notices page, you're giving your customers different ways of interacting with you, you're encouraging your customers to interact with you in other spaces, not just on your shop front. So it's essentially channeling customers that come to your shop front to shop, to shop also to join you by, for example, signing up to your, your mailing list. And that will then also help you to then, when you're doing your order cycle reminder emails, it will help you to reach more of your customers with those um, prompts. So on your about page and your notice page, if you don't have this already, include a link to sign up to your newsletter. Um, a prompt to like your Facebook page and encourage your customers to follow you on Instagram as well if you're also on Instagram. So it's just using these spaces where customers come to shop with you to encourage this kind of deepening of an of a online relationship with you. Okay, so that's enough of the Open Food Network specific section. So now we're going on to my top tips for email marketing. Sorry, like can, I just, can I just quickly interrupt? Yeah. Um, yeah. You mentioned adding the shop now button on your Instagram. And it, did you have a, a link for that to give instruction? I was just trying to do it just then. And yeah, so maybe on, so include a shop now button on your Facebook. So that's the blue button on Facebook. On Instagram, it's a bit different. What you want to do on Instagram is you want to have a link in your bio. Okay. And if you have a business account on Instagram, you just go into the settings and you can change the, the link that you have in your, in your bio. But if you don't have a business account, I think you can still just type one link into your bio. Um, but if you don't have a business account, then you should change it to a business account. Um, no, I, I've got yeah. that. I, I wondered whether there was a specific button, but as long as you've got the link, that's enough. Yeah, okay. that's fine. Right. And then it just, again, it's the action of, the, I'll come to the bit about this later, but it's just for now, always remembering whenever you post to encourage the action that you want your customer to take. So for example, if you have your link in your bio on Instagram that takes people to your shop front, make sure that when you post on Instagram, you include at the bottom of the caption, please visit the, um, to visit the shop, go to the link in my bio. And it's just always making it really clear to your customer where to go and what to do and never kind of leaving them hanging. Like they've seen a great post, but now what do I do? So it's 
sometimes just telling them to go there. But is that not bombarding them constantly? Do they not get bored of hearing the same message? No, and I think, I, I guess it's, I guess it's very specific to your customer group, but I also think that it's important for any customers to be given a clear route of action. So it's again, if you think of it yourself as a, for marketing your food enterprise, is you're you're making things really easy for your customers to take action to come and shop with you because it's like if they're not shopping, if they're not going to shop with you like they'll probably just skim over the, go to the link in, link in my bio to shop with us. They probably won't even notice that sentence long enough to be kind of feel bombarded by it. But if it's a customer that wants to shop with you, then you're giving this, you're giving like a clear instruction of where to go and what to do. So it's not leaving your customer kind of hanging and confused. Like, oh, where do I go? What do I, so it's just, and it's also, it's requesting your customer to take an action that you want them to take. And then it's trusting that they can, if they want to take that action, if they don't want to, they won't kind of thing. So you're thinking it's okay to have an action on every post? It depends on the platform. So on Instagram, at the end of your post, you could definitely say, visit the link in the bio, link in our bio to shop now. And if, for example, your order cycles close and you want them to take a different action, like join your mailing list, you could have your um, you can have your link being your landing page and ask people if you want to sign up to our mailing list, you can choose to do so by visiting the link in our bio. So you can phrase it more of an invitation for a softer touch, but then it's very different on Facebook. Um, on Facebook, you only really want to, I would recommend not do it rather than whenever you do an original content post that you've written yourself, then you really want to make that piece of content really work for you by having a goal for what you want your customer to do when they see that piece of content. So if it's a order cycle reminder post, then you want your customer to take action by shopping with you. So you could just mention there, go to the shop now button above to Guess shop. What? That's the button, the button above is what, where is this button? Yeah, I will, I'll show you. Um, so I'm gonna go to, for, exa for an example, I'm just gonna go to one of the pages that I manage and although I'm seeing it actually as an admin, hold on, if I go to another page, I, I'm pretty sure that if I go to open food now, um, okay, if I go to Tamar as an example, I'll show you where the button is and it's really simple to change it. Um, Okay, so at the top of your page, you might not see this if you're an admin for the page, but this is what your customers or visitors see. Mm -hmm. And they'll see a blue button here and Tamo has it set up, but it's a shop now button that takes customers straight to your Open Food Network shop front. So if you're an admin of the page, like the page I just showed you, if I go mm -hmm. to Upcycled Mushrooms again, um, what you'll see is an option where it says edit shop now. And to edit this, you just click on the edit button and you can choose a variety of different options of what you want to do with the button. So you click that edit button and that's where you can put a link to your shop front. So it's a fairly straightforward thing to do. Um, oh, but I, can't, I can't find it really. Mm. I'm on the Ulster Country Market thing and I can't find it. It that's might be that I have to do it on my online perhaps, um, on my, um, I. Yeah, try it on your computer, but also, are you in the Facebook group, the Thriving Food Hubs Facebook group? The Th Thriving Food Hubs? Yeah, it's yeah. a Facebook yeah. group. Yeah, yeah. If, if, you, if you are, um, if, if you could message me on there, and then I can walk you through that step by step, if you like, because I think sometimes it can be confusing when you're looking, you know, you're not, yeah, depending on where you're looking at your page, so maybe that or at the end of the session, if we've got time, I, we could stay on for a little bit afterwards and I'll sh you can share your screen and I can walk you through it if you like. Okay. It's on us, it's on us, send message on Ulster Country Market, not shop now. Where, where's that? Well, you can't see it because you're the admin, but if you look. If, uh, you're, the ad, if you're the admin, it yeah. should look like this and you should have a gray button saying edit shop now. Okay, Susie, t send me a screenshot, will you, please? Yeah, will do. Thank you. 
Well, well, Sarah, I'm totally happy to stay on um, after the session and I'll, we'll walk through it together and I'll help you. Okay. Because sometimes, sometimes it's, it's hard to follow wet through messages and just having someone see what you're seeing can be the best way to get something done. Okay. So, okay. okay. So, um, okay. Back to the slides, but thank you so much for your questions. And I'm really glad to be able to help you after, maybe after the session, we'll stay on for five minutes and get that sorted for you because it's a really good thing to do. Um, okay, so email marketing. So again, this is something specific for Open Food Network shop fronts, but one of the, this is, this is probably one of the quickest ways to grow your email list is to make sure that you have an integration set. If you're using MailChimp, which I'm going to recommend as well. If this is a bit too much, or if you're not using MailChimp yet, um, I've got loads of resources about how to get us up with set up with MailChimp. I'll share them after the session, so I'll make sure that you have access to them um, so that you can get this set up. But it is a process that you'd have to step through. Um, when I share the slides, there's also a link here to contact me, and I can help walk you through this setup of how to get this sorted. But essentially, we can organize a um, automation, which means that whenever a customer shops with you, they get sent a prompt to sign up for your mailing list. Um, and we do it in a way that's GDPR compliant as well. So it's a safe way to grow your mailing list. And obviously it's something your customer can opt in or opt out of. Um, but this is a really useful way to grow your list. And the other thing to do is to invite your customers. Um, I've got a handy guide here of how to do this safely, um, according to GDPR rules. Um, and also like a step-by-step -step of how, you know, a cut and paste email that you can use to do this that will help you with this. Um, and inviting your current customers to join your mailing list helped Health and Local Food Hub to increase their subscribers from 24 to 47 when they were starting out, which if you have a big mailing list, that might not sound like much, but actually when you're starting out and you've got a smaller customer base, that makes a massive difference. And it's just taking your customers onto this kind of more connected um, to have a more connected relationship with you. So rather than just shopping on your shop front, you now have access to them via email, which will help to build that relationship and generate trust in the long term. So, and the other thing is to send order cycle reminders. If you're not doing this already, um, this is definitely something that you want to start doing. On average, um, food hubs get 10% more revenue for order cycles when they send out an order cycle reminder than they do for orders that they don't. And this is stats that we can see um, through, through, through the Open Food Network. So it definitely works. Um, when you're sending an order cycle reminder email, remember the main goal of the email is to encourage your customers to visit your shop front before your order cycles close. So you wanna make that the clearest action for this email. Don't make the email too long or complicated. Just, you know, what you're offering. This is a reminder, order cycle's closing. We don't want you to miss it. Um, click here to shop now, something like this. So simple, straightforward. Um, and it's the, the tone of voice is remembering the benefit that you're offering to your customers. And it's the benefit is that they're not missing out on this opportunity to shop with you if you're running an order cycle system. Also here, um, this is assuming that you're doing an order cycle style system, but if you're not and you're constantly open, it's just there's other ways to contact your customers through email. And it could be if you're having a, if you have some new items, um, you could send you know, an email that's telling your customer, customers about these new items and just have faith that if your customers have subscribed to your mailing list, have the confidence to know that they're happy to hear from you or they wouldn't have subscribed. And if customers do unsubscribe, don't take that personally. It, just, it might mean that they've moved and it's not relevant for them anymore. It's just have faith that people that are on your mailing list and remain there want to hear from you. And this is actually an offering that you're, it's actually a useful offering to remind your customers that they can shop with you. So it's coming from that point of, of, of confidence that your customers want to hear from you is, is definitely a, a good start with email marketing. And I've created this action plan here that you can download, download when I share these slides, you just click on, click, click on the image um, and it will download for you. And it gives you a kind of action point step list to get your email marketing in a really good place. And that includes step-by-step -step how to get started with MailChimp, um, how to grow your audience and 
some tips for emailing your customers. Again, if you've got any questions about any of these points, if you're in the Thriving Food Hubs Facebook group, feel free to, to ask any questions there. And I usually check in there um, most days. So, um, Hayley, when, it, when you say here you can download, does this mean when we get the copy of the, um, of the talk today, the webinar, we'll be able to click on that? Yeah, so what I'll do is I'm going to share the video, but I'm also going to share these slides. And I'm going to share these slides as a document where when you're watch, when you're scrolling it, you can just click with your mouse on any of these down of these bits and you can access the videos or the documents. But I've made it really clear which which bits to click on. So here, for example, the arrow shows you just double click on that and it will download onto your computer and it will be like an image file that you can click on. So if you have any problems using it, then just message me and I'll, I'll walk you through it. Um, Cool. So the next topic is social media. And again, I feel like I'm putting quite, condensing quite a lot of things into uh, a general overview. So apologies everyone for that. And if any of the bits aren't making sense, I've got lots of different resources that go into a bit more detail. Um, and so my main tip for social media is to share responsibility for it where you can. If you are just if, if you are doing the social media for your food enterprise or by yourself, then congratulations, you are amazing because it's a lot of it is it is a lot of work. Um, and it's really important to create a system to with your social media that works for you and also to take social media action that is um, sustainable for you to maintain in, in the long term. So if you can share responsibilities, then do. And what I mean by this is that if you can't share responsibilities for people to schedule and, and actually post, then try and kind of bring in your, your team or anyone that you work with or your producers or suppliers to share content with you. And that could be images, it could be information, it could be testimonials, um, or it could be their personal stories. If it's a supplier, do they have, you know, could they take a short video for you? Could they, you know, could they take some photos for you? It's just wherever you can start thinking about how to, how to, how to get some support and help um, with your social media. So if you're sharing the responsibility for the content, for example, for images or video content or anything like this, just have an idea of people that you might contact to ask um, for their images. And if it's your team or if it's volunteers, then are there images that they could take in the, in the day to day of, of working with your hub or working with your enterprise or creating produce that they could take and share with you. So it's just kind of getting into the habit of um, asking for images, which will help you to have more to post. Um, and also asking your also asking your friends and family as well to like and share your posts like people are usually quite happy to help you um and if you've posted something that you want more people to see just ask some of your friends or family members could you just like this post for me or share this post and just getting into the habit of calling in your community to, to help you get better reach with your social media um does all of that make sense so far yep yeah okay and, okay, so what I mean, and my other tip is to prioritize what you're doing. And what I mean by this is that depending on what, you know, the size of your food enterprise, or if you have any volunteer support, if you have any team members that can help you, or if you're doing this all by yourself, it's really important to prioritize what you're doing. So you're not trying to do all the things and, you know, ending up doing none of the things because you just get, it just feels like too much. So here is kind of an overview of if you're in a really good place with all, with the three main social media platforms, this is kind of a general guide to how much you should be posting per, per week. So on Instagram, you want to be doing about two to three posts per week. On Facebook, you want to be doing about one post a day. And on Twitter, you want to be doing about 15 posts a day. And this is to get a good result if you can maintain this consistently. So the reason I put prioritized here is because this might feel out of the reach of, of some of us, um, in which case it's always good to focus where you will get the results. So rather than doing everything and 
getting kind of overwhelmed and not doing it, focus on one platform or two platforms that you could do well. My advice as a food for, for food enterprises would be always to start with Facebook. Um, and again, I can also share some stats that show that food enterprises, that the traffic to open food network shop fronts usually comes from Facebook out of these three platforms. But again, it's very, it depends on the personality of the food enterprise, but as a, as a kind of general tip, starting with Facebook, getting that re going really well, and then branching out into Instagram would be a good direction to go. And then perhaps then when you have those two sorted, then moving on to Twitter and it's growing what you're doing on social media rather than trying to do all of the things all at once. Um, and also on top of this, again, if you're in a really good place, then you really want to be posting three stories a day and that could be in a work week, so Monday to Friday. Stories are those short videos that you see sometimes on Facebook and Instagram. Um, if you haven't seen a story before, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then let me know at the end and I'll show you. But essentially you want to be doing three per day posted across Facebook and Instagram to get a really good result from those. Um, and again, this might feel like a lot. So it's really thinking about what is sustainable for you and your enterprise. If you're just focusing on Facebook, you, you could still do some stories, but it's not quite as important as if you're focusing on Instagram. So again, it's, it's very dependent on your own personal situation. If you want um, a bit of personal guidance on that, then in the Q&A session at the, at the end, I'm happy to go into Ellie, detail. we've got a small problem here. What yeah. is what is the 421 rule? Okay. So the 421 rule is, I think in my next slide, I've got a webinar that I did before about how to schedule your social media, which goes into a little bit of detail about the 421 rule. Um, but in a summary, on Facebook, to get the best, to get really to get good results on Facebook in a small scale way, i.e., with like what might be realistic posting for the average food enterprise you really want to be doing seven posts a week. So that means posting from Monday through to Sunday, and you can schedule these in advance to make that more um, possible for you. But the 421 rule means that of those seven posts, four of these posts can be shared posts. So it's sharing other, other like perhaps content from your suppliers, perhaps content from your producers, perhaps content from your community, your friends, your um, other businesses in the community. It could be sharing content from organizations whose ethics and um, mission you believe in. Um, so it's essentially sharing other people's content onto your Facebook page, which help to, which help to really display the personality of your food enterprise. So it's not sharing things that are irrelevant, but sharing things that are relevant to your food enterprise that help to give any visitors to your, to your or any of your followers um, an idea of who you are. And the reason why you want to share other people's posts rather than posting your own content all the time or your own posts all the time is because this means that your page is seen as part of the Facebook community more by Facebook itself. So I don't know if, any, if you've heard of, what, of um, the Facebook algorithm, um, but essentially it, Facebook gives you more reach with what you're posting if they see your page as being valuable to the Facebook community. And one way to, to, to help in, increase the way that increase that for you is to post shared posts. Um, and the two is doing two of your own content posts per week. So that could be where you share your own video or you share your own images and with a caption about your food enterprise or sharing a bit of your story or so it's anything that you've created yourself um, and the one is one post per week which is an ask post so an ask post is a post where you've invited your followers to take action based on that post so an ask post could be order cycle closing soon, please visit our shop front. So it's, and, or your ask post could be join our mailing list. So it's whenever you're explicitly asking your customers to do something for you, that's an ask post and that should only really be, um, it's not that it should only be once per week. It's just that this is the best system to get the best reach for your final ask post. 
So if you wanted to ask more, so essentially what this system of the 41 system is doing is it's stopping you from just posting every time you post on your Facebook page, it's only asking your customers to do a thing. So if every single post is like, come shop at our shop, um, then it's, you probably won't get much reach with those posts because it's not really showing the algorithm that you're offering your, your followers value with your, with your post on your page. So essentially this um, rule is a system that helps you post posts which your customers and your followers are more likely to respond to. Um, I feel like I've kind of waffled that response, but I've also written a blog post about the 41 rule, um, which explains it in probably a slightly more concise. Um, what, concise what you're saying here is, if I understand it rightly, you are not a fan of doing what I do because I'm doing it all on my own. And that is I do a post for Instagram and it automatically appears on my Facebook page. And not it's not that I'm not a fan of that, actually. Actually, that can be a really good thing to do if you don't have much time for social media. So I'm really, I think it's really important with social media to do what is sustainable and possible for you, but just understand what the possibilities are if you posted in not the perfect way, but in ways that are kind of proven to give you more results. So that is perfect if you only have time to post on Instagram, because then at least you're still being present on Facebook. Um, it's not the perfect way to do things because Facebook and Instagram, you'll find that probably your audience on both of those platforms are quite different. And also people respond to those platforms in different ways, but it's really important to start with where you are with social media and kind of keep building upon it where you can. So if you're focusing more on Instagram, then there's different ways that you can build upon what you're doing. But if you're doing that already, which means that you're probably posting on Facebook a couple of times a week, all that means is to get better results on Facebook if you just started sharing content, a bit of other people's content or other people's posts on your Facebook page, you'd then start to probably get more reach with the two posts that you're sharing from Instagram. And then all you'd really have to do is just post once per week on Facebook, have you seen our shop this week? We've got this, this, and this that's new, or you know, one post that's like talking about your enterprise and inviting people to go and shop with you. Does that does that make sense? So essentially your two, the two in that 421 rule would be the post that you're showing from Instagram, which gives you a backdrop to be able to do a, a, an ask post, which directly asks people on Facebook to visit your shop. Um, and also the 41 rule, you can also see it as being like the four shared posts are kind of building the soil. Um, and the two posts are this kind of becoming a bit more visible with your content um, where you're kind of the, the root, the, the sprout is showing. And the one rule is like the fruit because that's the post where you're actually getting a result that you want to get, i.e. people shopping on your shop. Um, so it's the, the other stuff kind of exists to help your one pose that you really want people to take action on to get the best possible results. Um, and I hope I've explained that, okay. So, so okay, um, does Facebook actively penalize users if it was 427 rule? It doesn't, pe it doesn't penalize um, users. And also the algorithm, it's not an exact science because no. no one apart from Facebook really knows exactly how it works, but um, I've had a lot of success with um, my 421 rule with a lot of different um, types of enterprises that I've worked with, um, not just food enterprises, but also other types of businesses or not-for-profits as well. And it's not that Facebook penalizes, it's just that you, you could probably test this with your reach in your Facebook insights that if on weeks when you're doing more shared posts, you'll probably see that your posts will eventually start reaching more people. Um, and it's not that you're penalized, it's just that you're not boosted and you don't appear as, as relevant to your community. It's essentially you're just broadcasting at people all the time rather than being part of the community. And when Facebook changed the algorithm rules a couple of years ago, one of the things they said is that they, 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 they want to stop, not stop, but they're not going to give reach to, to content that, yeah, that's essentially just people selling their, selling their stuff. And yeah, so it's not that you're penalized, it's just that you won't get as good reach. So it's, it's just that okay. you are, you benefit, you get better reach if you do these kind of positive actions 
rather than penalized if you don't do them kind of thing. Yeah, because I was falling into the, the trap of thinking that every post I needed to have a link of some sort, either to sign up or to shop or to sign up or to shop. And then I was thinking, no, no, that wasn't the 41 rule. 41 is just once a week. Yeah. Giving the action. Okay. And you'll find that you actually, essentially, it's like making sure that when you do do that request of your audience, you get the best possible results. So the thing is, if you're doing that seven days a week or every time you post, you know, you're, you're, you're asking the question, but you're probably not getting that much reach. And you'll probably find that people aren't taking that action as much as if you did this soil building activity of the shared posts, the original content post, which would be like a lovely image and part of your story, maybe, or something entertaining, educational or emotional. Like, so it's, if you're not kind of building that soil that when you actually do do the kind of ask post like shop now um then yeah not as many people will see it and they're less likely to take action on it um so okay, yeah really clear thank you yeah perfect. Cool. um it it's again it's like social media should be this kind of process of don't feel bad about what you're not doing but just constantly add tiny little improvements when and where you can um because it's you know like some businesses have like full teams of gangs of people working on this stuff to get it right so it's you know if you're doing your own social media and you're already doing a really good job and it's just where you can just keep trying to improve this process and just think as well of how how you like to be spoken to on or interacted with on social media and if you had um a business that was just constantly like go here go here go here go here um, you would not then, go there <laughs> that's it, yeah. Whereas if you'd, oh, I've seen this business, oh, they shared this interesting article, oh, that's really interesting, cool, I'm gonna look at that, or, oh, they shared this recipe, this oh, that's nice, or, oh, that picture's really lovely. And you, if you're kind of doing these actions that kind of build your personality or build this like relationship, that when you say, oh yeah, order cycle's closing this week, don't miss out, we've got some lovely stuff for you, here's the link, then you're more likely to be like, oh yeah, okay. It's just seeing your kind of, thinking of your customers all the time as being humans that are interacting with you as humans in this space. Um, is always a good idea. And this is just a system that helps you to kind of remember how to do that. Because it can also be quite easy on social media to just kind of just be like, you know, like want the results all the time, but that makes you almost do actions which kind of push the results away from you. And it's- So yeah. I, I realized that I've been doing exactly that. Probably Rachel has too from the way she's talking. Um, <laughs> so we've obviously got to change this. Um, when you're saying that the four, the sharing things, it doesn't have to be sharing, does it? I mean, for could I give an example? I make brioche. Mm -hmm. um, so I could put a picture of the brioche and give a recipe underneath. That would belong to the four, would it? The recipe would belong to the two. Um, but that's a really nice thing to do. I mean, this anything that you're giving that's giving your, giving your, um, your audience value is a really good thing to do. So that would belong to the two, and that is the kind of thing that your audience would, you know, would really benefit from. But the four is the four is sharing other people's stuff, and the reason why the four is there is it's an algorithm thing. Facebook then sees your page as being an interacting kind of a live member of the Facebook community that's interacting with other pages. So it's 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 it's. it's it's a, it's a, yeah, it's, it's hard to get right because of course, like your kind of thoughts would be, why would I want to share other, other people's stuff on my Facebook page? Um, but essentially it means that your, your page is seen by the algorithm as being this kind of being part of the community and yeah. Okay. So, well, Louise has just put up a thing in the chat about it. Um, because of course she knows about country markets. Yeah. Um, she says it would be sharing something from Ulster News or a post from Greenpeace about reducing plastic content. Okay, yeah. I, I can see that. Yes. So, Sarah, another thing you might wanna do is like, um, I know like when it's marmalade season, for instance, you, it's quite often there's an article in BBC News about the popularity of marmalade and sharing that article or, um, whatever is relevant to you, um, I'm, I'm, yeah. It, so, it, and very basically, <clears throat> um, I know how to share <clears throat> share my posts to other groups. How do I share 
how do I share the thing from BBC News or from Greenpeace? How do I share that onto put it onto my post? Onto okay, my, got, my page. I've got, a, I've got a step by step for you that walks you through that that I'll share after the session because it okay. and it also might be something that I can show you one to one because it's quite straightforward. Okay. Um, it's on the it's on the video here with the this one how to schedule your social media and on this I show you how to share a post as well as how to schedule a shared post I'll have a look um, thanks a lot but yeah. I'll, when I when I share this I'll give you the exact minute where to go so that you, if you don't want to watch the whole thing you don't have to and it will just give you the information and it literally shows you step by step um but yeah Louise thank you so much like actually real world examples is definitely the best way to go with that question so thanks for that no, thanks um, great, Louise thanks um, sorry, Kay, just one last thing on this. I think we probably milked it enough, but um, is it actually physically possible to schedule a shared post using the business suite? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So um, that actually is also in this exact video here. Um, I've got a step by step that shows you how to do that. It's, it's really straightforward. I have a feeling that my system might be set up incorrectly in some way because. I, I thought I'd followed it and it hasn't managed, but anyway, I'll try again. It's a, it's a, funny, <laughs> it's a funny little hack that isn't actually very clear. Um, and yeah, I can also, what I'll do as well as I'll share you um, an actual written step-by-step. -step. And it's this funny thing that not meant, like for some reason it's not that well known how to schedule a shared post. Um, I copy the link and paste it in and then it shows, it says that the preview is unavailable. But when you post it, the preview, comes up. Ah, so I just have yeah. to call that. But I think that might be a glitch with, because it works on, I, I, I've had someone talk to me about that before and it does, it, it works on mine, but not, but it usually comes up. I would do a quick test, um, maybe when we're done and just do, schedule a shared post for like five minutes from now and then see, and I'm almost certain that when I've heard this problem, had this problem before, or heard of this problem before, when you actually post it, the previews there, which is kind of frustrating. Oh. When you're kind right. of posting in the dark like <laughs> what it look like but it it works but yeah come to me if not and we'll figure it out together okay thank you okay so the other thing my other main tip on social media is just making sure you're covering the social aspect of social media so make sure you're responding to everything so if someone likes or comments on a post always thank them. Um, if they like a post on Facebook, invite them to like your page if they haven't already. And it's just like where you can, if people are actually interacting with you, try to interact back. Um, so schedule a little bit of time, maybe half an hour a week if you can, to spend some time doing engagement activities on Facebook and Instagram. If you're on Instagram, this is quite a nice thing to do. It's just going to your followers and just liking some of their posts. And do, if you do that just before you post on Instagram, it means that you'll then be top of mind for the people that you just interacted with, which means you're more likely to get them to like your post, which then because of the algorithm means that more people see your post. So it's this kind of benevolent cycle of um, activity, which gives you further reach and more interactions, which then makes more people see what you're doing. Um, so this is always a good thing to do. So, um, I was gonna cover a bit about Facebook advertising, but I kind of feel like this in itself deserves a whole session. I will say a couple of things here. If you're ready with your social media to go to the next level and actually do paid for advertising, I first of all really recommend that you've nailed a lot of the stuff that I've just talked about before you go into advertising, because as soon as you're spending money on anything when it comes to marketing, you want to be really clear on what the goal is. You want to make sure that your co your copy, your content of what it, of your advert is really um, perfect. Um, so it's like whenever you are spending any money, you really want to make sure that what you're what you're doing is just really really tight. Um, there's two different types of adverts that you can do on Facebook. Well, there's lots of different, but they're kind of broadly divided into two camps. You can very simply boost a post which is really good for reach so that more people can see this post. But if you want someone to take action, i.e. visit your shop or do a thing, you want to do a Facebook advert, which is a bit different than a boosted post. So boosted posts are for um, like reach. So it's just improving this, this reach, helping you reach more people with that post. 
So if you want to broadcast news, that's great. But if you want people to do a thing, then you want to do an advert. And the best place to do that is through um, business.facebook.com. But also if I just click on here, I'm just going to show you something really quickly, but I won't linger here long because, um, sorry, my internet's slow, sorry. Uh, on your on your on your page if you're an admin you should quite clearly see a button if you're looking at it on your um on, on a desktop you should clearly see a button that says promote this is kind of a new fairly new um, way of advertising on facebook that makes it a lot more simple than how it used to be and oh great my page is unresponsive sorry everybody so if you click on that promote button then you'll get this option of do you want to boost a post for more reach or do you want someone to take an action and so just quickly showing you this but again I, I really like to do this in a longer session because it's quite it's it, like whenever you're spending money on marketing it's really important to get it right um yeah so you can yeah get more button clicks is the like the action you want to take if you want people to actually take an action. Um, and boost a post is, I mean, it's, yeah, I think I'm going to stop there because I think that this deserves a bit more of a in-depth session. So if anyone's interested in learning a bit more about Facebook advertising, um, contact me in the Facebook group and I'll set, I'll, I'll, I'll set something up because it's, I mean, it's really effective. Um, but again, it's, it's something you really want to get right. Um, and it's a quite, detailed topic in itself so okay and just thinking of the time I'm gonna the other thing I've got some tips around is about how to create content and again this is like a massive topic distilled into a tiny little section of um, tips so the quickest thing that you can do to make sure that you're posting or posting better content or writing better emails to your customers is to just think of the three e's like is what you're writing educational entertaining or emotional does it promote a positive emotion um or, or a kind of a heartfelt emotion from the the person who's going to be reading it um is it educational and sarah your example of a brioche recipe is a perfect example of a valuable educational post it's a really lovely example recipes being a, being a food enterprise is always a really awesome way to go with this. Um, emotional might be something around, it could be even just sharing like adorable livestock images. It could be, um, it, it could be like your personal, if you're, if you're a one person kind of enterprise, then it could be sharing your own personal reaction to, for example, the, the onset of spring and summer after a long winter, or it's just anything that you feel might provoke uh, an emotional response in, in your audience. Um, and also entertaining is good. So here is when like things like, so obviously humor is a very personal thing, but I hope that you will have a general idea of who, who your customer is and what kind of humor they might respond to. And this is something that you could try and then, you know, gradually see how things work and, 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 and yeah, you'll, you'll gradually get, get better at hitting the mark with it. Um, but memes are quite a good place to go. Um, it's, it's really strange. So one of the, the pages that I've been having with is Upcycled Mushrooms. And every time we post a funny mushroom related meme, um, it just gets way more reach than any other post. So it seems like the mushroom community loves mushroom humor. <laughs> Um, so it's, yeah, and a meme is like um, a, a viral image with like usually something funny or sometimes political kind of in the, in the message. So it's a, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe share one in the Facebook groups. And I'll share one of the mushroom memes after this in the Facebook group. So you know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, so anything funny, it could be funny videos as well. Um, also, for some reason, baby goat videos always do really well as well. So yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so when you're posting something, have a little sense check in your head. Is it educational? Does it provoke emotion or is it entertaining? And if it's one of those things, you're probably on the right track with it. Um, so, you know, for example, in your ass post, is there anywhere that you can kind of nudge a pun in there somewhere, like food related punning? No, well, ne never a bad idea. I know some people hate them, but like, I'm, I'm sure even if someone cringes, they're not going to dislike you for it. <laughs> um, so, and 
The other thing is to create, way, this particularly works well on Instagram, um, try some branded content. And what I mean by branded content is, you know, it could be a color scheme that you want associated with your food enterprise. It could be if you have um, uh, any um, like kind of logo assets, like I know Rachel, you've got this really gorgeous logo with those hand drawn, lovely blackberries. And, you know, it could be that every now and then you do a post with those blackberries or the leaves kind of at forming like a nice border on a post and, you know, with your order cycle clothes text in the center, it just, it's something that on Instagram works really well because it helps your page look consistent and also professional. Um, and pulls things together. It's so like maybe every four or five posts you, or three posts, you could do something that has some of your branding pulled in. Um, here is another webinar I did about image editing for beginners, and it walks you through step by step how to set up a Canva account, Canva, Canva account, um, and where to find images that you can use for free online. Um, so this is another nice place to get started. I feel like I'm throwing lots of other resources at you today. I hope you don't mind. Um, and yeah and so sorry Kate can I just quickly ask another question um if if there's a if we're making a post to say that the order cycle is open should uh, what's the the pros and cons of having the same one every single time you open I mean you obviously it, it would be nice for customers to recognize all oh, that means I need to shop now but does it get boring? Is it better to have a, a new design every time? Maybe it's actually good for consistency to have something similar. Um, what you could do is you could also test this as well. It depends, and also it depends on how much you're posting. So if on, so on Facebook, you could have the same one every time. And I don't think that it would matter too much because it's, you don't have a visual grid in the same way you do with Instagram where people can see all of your posts in one place. You just have a newsfeed. And actually that can work in your favor if it's like easily recognizable because as people as oh yeah or you know it's sometimes that consistency is effect, really effective on facebook on instagram because it's a much more visual space where people can actually look at your grid as one thing then if you're only posting three posts or two posts on instagram a week and one of those three is always the same image that will quite quickly look quite samey but what you could do is if you say had a border for example, with your lovely leaves and blackberries, you could put like an image of a different produce kind of behind it. And then the text in like, a, like the same font, for example, order, like so the order cycle opening and the border is always the same, but maybe the background image changes every every time. So you, and you could like maybe put like a layer over it so it's slightly faded. So then the asset, like the photos faded and then the, the assets that you've got there show up more um okay. yeah. so same but slightly different and then you're getting that consistency and your branding in there but then it's not the same post and also I'm happy if you want to share any any samples and I'm, I'm happy to kind of give any of my feedback on it if you like as well so thank you yeah great Thanks. could I just add something to that as well um with our we use exactly the same image every week but I just delete it the following day so it's not all the way through um so it, it stays up until the order cycle reopens so it goes up on a sunday stays for the monday and then i take it off on the tuesday morning so although it's the same image and everybody recognizes it it's then gone until the order cycle closes again so when i look at my grid it still looks nice and tidy because it was really exactly that it was bothering me that it was just kind of you know closing 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 so yeah, yeah. That's a really good idea. And, and it's just, yeah. it's, it's a bit easier and a bit quicker and a bit lazier, but it, it, it does <laughs> solve the problem. That's a really good idea. <laughs> and then um, that also then means that you could, then Rachel, for example, you could use those lovely kind of Blackberry assets on like other images on your Instagram to have that kind of consistency of your, your branding. But that's such a good idea, Kate. Thanks so much for sharing that one because I didn't even think of that one. Nice one. And then also <laughs> making sure that when you do do that, share it to your stories as well, that it's, you know, because they only last 24 hours. So you could post that image, um, share it to your stories. And then as Kate said, remove it the next day. That's that's an advanced setting for me. I don't do stories, so I have to move on to that. <laughs> maybe that maybe that's your next. That's my challenge. next challenge. <laughs> Go team. Thank you, Kate. 
Cool. So my last bit on content, and then I'm pretty sure that's my last little bit. So we'll be wrapping up. Sorry, we're running a little bit late. And I feel like the Q&As have been happening ongoing. So rather than having a section at the end. So I hope that's okay for everybody. Um, content tips is just always include a clear and easy um, to follow call to action in, in what you're posting. This doesn't count for shared posts, um, but for example, in your ask post, make it really clear what you want your customers to do on Instagram. You can do this every post on Instagram, include a call to action, just like link in by for more information, something like that, unless it's an actual call to, to show up. Um, keep content as simple as you can. Um, imagine you're writing for a really wide audience. So the clearer and the more kind of simple your writing is, the more people will be able to kind of digest it. Because sometimes social media and the online world can feel like you're bombarded by lots of information. And so it's, yeah, just keep, keep things as simple as you can. But that doesn't mean necessarily short captions because sometimes longer captions mean people stay for longer and can but yeah but it's just that kind of balance don't like maybe don't have like um 100 word sentences is kind of what i mean here and um the other content tip is on your um browser bookmark and for, and on instagram you can favorite posts as well but just wherever you can try and bookmark and favorite any useful content that you see that you might like to share on your on your page um, because then that's just helping your process. When you want to share some posts, then you've got a bookmark list of things that you can go to to get started. And sometimes if you're scheduling your social media one time per week, that could be your first place to go and you could do your um, shared posts first. And that just kind of gets you into the rhythm of, of posting before you write your own posts. And the last tip about content is just consistency. And this goes back to what I was saying about how um, make sure you're doing whatever you're doing on social media, make sure that it's sustainable for you um, in the long term, because you really want to kind of keep a consistent presence in these spaces and build upon it, but never go backwards to posting less than you are now. It's just that kind of just keep showing up consistently. Um, and that will help you with regards to the algorithm, but it will also help to build long term trust um, with your with your audience as well. It's that kind of consistency of showing up um, is important. Okay, one last thing, in person, don't forget word of mouth. So don't be afraid to ask your, your customers, particularly ones where you know they really love what you're doing and they, they talk to you and they like ask your customers to talk about you. Um, yeah, lots of the time people are really happy to help. So don't forget to ask people to kind of spread the word, particularly if someone comes to you and says, I love this and I love what you're doing. And, or if someone emails you a testimonial, just be like, that's great, thank you so much. Um, if you really love what you're doing, um, help us out by sharing, like by spreading the word kind of thing. Um, so yeah. Um, also, if you haven't already, please join our Thriving Food, um, our Thriving Hubs Facebook group. Um, this is also a link that takes you directly to the group so that you can join in. Um, feel free as well. Um, it's a really lovely space. Lots of people kind of, um, if someone that posts a question, they usually get answers from the community as well as from, from us. So yeah, so feel free to ask any of your questions in that space as well. Um, and yeah, next webinar is gonna be everything you need to know about customer surveys, um, how to do an effective customer survey to get answers that will actually help your food enterprise. So what to put in a customer survey to help you learn what you need to know to, yeah, to, to better serve your customers um, and also how to gather testimonials as well in a, in a kind of friendly, efficient way. Um, yeah, so everything about those things. And Q&A, so out of the slides, I hope you guys don't mind that was like an hour of slides. I wasn't quite expecting that, but I feel like because the questions were as we were going. Uh, does, okay, so really slides. Super. Thank you so much. That was really super. Um, did you say that you're going to do something on boosting posts? Because that's another um, black hole. Yeah, so I'm going to do something on Facebook advertising. I might add, because I've I, yeah, I was planning on posting the schedule for upcoming webinars in the next couple of days, but it might be something that I do like in addition to our weekly webinars. So I think from if next week we're doing customer surveys, then after that we're doing a couple of more kind of group type webinars where food enterprises are speaking. And I think sometimes this means that my marketing webinars, I kind of put them on the back burner for a while, but I feel today that there's quite a lot of questions. Um, so I might start doing more of these that are 
more of a kind of working session on one of the topics rather than just going over so much at once. Um, that would be good, yeah. yeah so you. I think on the list now is, is Facebook advertising. Um, and yeah, it's just something that if you're doing it, you really wanna do it well and forewarned and yeah. So, oh, um, Louise, thank you so much for putting, um, Louise has just put a, um, a shared a doc in the chat, which is a link to a feedback form. Um, and it would be really, it's, it's always really helpful to get any feedback on these sessions. It really helps me to provide better ones. <laughs> um, so if you could um, fill out that form and just let me know what you thought. Well, well, will the form be, will the chat be on the, uh, you know, the copy of the, of the video and everything? No, the chat usually is lost. So it might be a case of clicking on the form and filling it in straight after. Sorry. Okay. I can share the form in the in the event as well if anyone can, but um it's just in the chat now. If you click on it, it'll pop up in another window. Um, um but that, again it really helps um to to yeah to help these um improve. So I'm sorry I kind of overrun a, a bit today and um yeah uh if anyone has any questions on this topic, also in the event page on Facebook for this particular event, if you write your questions in there, then I know it's about this session and I can get back to you in that space, which is helpful way to kind of categorize what we're talking about. Um, and that's where I'm gonna post this video and also the slides as well. Um, and yeah, we're gonna put the form in the Facebook page, the event page as well. So um, yeah, so thanks everyone for coming and um, hopefully see you next week in the customer survey session. And again, um, sharing everything in the event page and Sarah, um, Sarah Parker, if you'd like to stay on after the session and I'll show you where the button is on your, on your Facebook page, um, then we can do that too. I'm happy to stay on for an extra five minutes, so. Okay, that would be very kind, thanks. Oh. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks, bye. Brilliant, thanks. thank you a lot. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for coming.